I have a list of chores you can go over. I want to give money, everybody. It's good to see you all back again. Um, we're going to do um, the executive session on our interim study committees. The next bill we'll take up is uh, 1619, requiring a police officer to take interviews with suspected felons. Representative Burridge. Um, Mr. Chair and uh, members of the committee, we met and also we met with the bill sponsor. And before we met, I did photocopy and pass on Michael Acapino's uh, uh, email. It was maybe 42 pages long from the peer reviewed journal uh, that had 329 references on uh, uh, police interrogation. Um, the testimony we heard said this. Um, someone can sign off on anything, but it doesn't make a case. And every police officer has to go out and substantiate it with physical evidence or other witnesses. So no matter what goes on in that interviewing room when that person's under arrest, it doesn't apply. It may cut down, may cut to the quick and limit the amount of suspects if they're going to go after for a while or who is a primary interest, but it doesn't make a case. And we, uh, even the sponsor, uh, agreed after hearing the testimony, uh, the governor here to my right. Um, and so we, we, uh, we recommend that it not be continued. Thank you. So much. I'll second that. That was very eloquent. You must be a school teacher. I'm going to do that next. <laughs> what is the motion? And what the motion is, is no legislation. That's correct, sir. So they don't have to record? No. No. But they often do. The motion was uh, no future legislation. Yes. That's right. Who said? Oh, what? that was uh, Rep. Sesquith, I believe. Is that she? Oh, it's uh, Rep. Sesquith. Okay. I did require me, and I don't know if you went to this piece of it, when, they, when something happens and the police come and say, did you see anything or whatever, or what are you doing here? Would that have to be then recorded if this was to pass? I mean, they couldn't even really talk to anybody without a camera. Any, uh, any confession that would be admissible in court, they wanted to have a recording of it. For it to be admissible, that was the intent of the law. Thank you very much. Mr. Robinson. Well, you know, I'll go back to my argument from the beginning. If, if I was on a jury and a policeman came in and said, this man confessed to murdering his best friend, but, and I, and, and they said, well, that's your word. He says that's not so. I just think without a, I would say in this day and age, the guy doesn't have a recording of it and he expects me to find it. I, I, I don't think my testimony as to what you said, and I deny it, is just worthless. So I just, to me, it was making into law what a jury is going to expect anyway. But I did a little research because I was on some committee. I went to police offices and police stations and so their biggest consent is, biggest problem is, most of their talking is done in prison. When you pick somebody up and you take somebody from, from the, where they pick them up to the police station, there's a lot of conversation going on. And you're making it so they cannot have any of that private conversation. No, no, no. You can have it. You just can't bring it into court. Most police, well, that's right. And so once they say it and then they go for it and report it, they're going to say, well, they can't say that because we said that in confidence in the police station. Most police, station, most police officers do it automatically. Any police station has the capability of doing it, and some don't. Some small police stations don't have the capability of doing it. You know? Most police stations do that. They don't need a lot of time to do it. It's just part of their procedures. I'm sorry. Let me catch you And on. another point I'd like to bring out too. Thank you. Yeah. Another point I'd bring out. You know these recommendations 
this does not stop somebody from coming in next year with a new bill saying let's record police officers when they get to this. We're not stopping them from bringing it in. We just say that today, right now, this committee says well, we don't need to. We don't need that. Could I just? This doesn't say you can't talk to them without recording it. Just says you can't bring it into court because it would be worthless. So, go ahead. You so, want to? Thank you. So if they say something in the car, yeah, and the police crews are on the way, now they go back and get recorded. They get the, the, the in court. They can say we have to throw this out because this was said in confidence in the police car. So you, I don't think you should the word in confidence because if it's in confidence, you couldn't use it anyway. Oh, in the enclosed area. Yeah. Representative Stevens. The issue of the statement being introduced in court, <coughs> it's strictly a statement and there is no corroborating evidence, they're probably going to walk. Yeah. Probably. But if they went to court with nothing but a statement, shame on them. Any prosecutor, and I prosecute where mm -hmm. their money has enough evidence without a statement, and a statement's frosting on the cake. And the jury can put whatever weight it chooses to that statement. That is the American jurisprudence system. They can say, we totally disagree that. We don't like it, we don't believe it, or, you know, I think he's telling the truth, and I think that's what happened. Representative Bull, right now, again, you know, but we're sitting here, we keep looking at the carriers right here. People come in, they throw their stuff and come in, you know. And all these things can be reintroduced. I mean, you know, we're all here saying what we would want, and yet we don't even know if we're going to be here. And I think last year, this past year, we had so many different commissions going on that we have to be looked at. I mean, you know. So I get a problem to keep doing the commission, commission, commission. I just want to bring that out because we're doing a lot of work here going back. Just represent Sharon. Whether we motion to the future or not, it will come back. It's a guarantee. It's going to happen anyway. So I, I think it's a good issue. Huh? That's it. You know, we should mark them number three, number four, and number so forth. I mean, they'll come back and they'll be worded differently, and maybe something else will come up and we'll see it in a different light. So we can't prevent that. The other issue, there seems to be a high degree of consistency uh, with police departments interviewing people now in that small room with a camera and with mics. You can actually hear the conversation in the interview because we've seen them play it on TV. And to me, I kind of like that idea because it covers both sides of the issue instead of watching someone getting bounced off a wall. Here you've got the individuals talking to each other. In a lot of cases, that has actually worked in favor of cases where they've heard the interview and they know what the, the arrestee said and vice versa. So I think we're doing that without a law. It's policy and procedure. So I, I you know what I'm saying? It, we're doing it already in a way. What I always was concerned about when we talked about reporting was being at an accident scene, which is a very fragile time on both sides of the issue, and having somebody running up, you know, trying to record what's going on. That's what bothers me the most, because that's a high tension area. And so, uh, yes, this will come back, and I don't have any hot burn really by saying, let's, we'll look at it further, because it will come into this room again. There's no question about it. Maybe more refined. That's how it works. Any other comments before we call the roll? Seeing that the motion was uh, no for the legislation recommended at this time. Mr. Clerk. Pelacos. Yes. Ruby. Yes. Robertson. No. Obsession. Aye. Burridge. Yes. Chandler. Aye. McCarthy. Aye. Welch. <coughs> Aye. Sharon. Aye. Fish. Aye. Weir. Aye. Stevens. Aye. Willow. Aye. Gag. Aye. Swinford. Aye. Willett. Aye. Chairman. Yes. 16 to 1. And the last bill we'll take up is House Bill 1652. Mm -hmm.
note for the chair of that subcommittee, Representative Chanley. Thank you. Um, I want to begin by saying that I really do believe that this interim study committee worked very, very well.